Hello, I'm John McDonald. Welcome to the first in a series of video reports we plan to make every quarter. Reports to inform you about issues, events, and people that are important to you and me and our corporation. And because we'll be reporting every three months, we've named this program 90 Days. of you who are wondering why we've taken the expense of giving this videotape to each of you and sending it to your home, well, we consider communication with you and your family to be so important that we want you to be able to view this at your leisure at home. When you're finished, you can save it for future viewing or you can reuse the tape for other equally entertaining shows. By now, I think most of you realize we're going through a period of enormous change at McDonnell Douglas. We're trying to make fundamental changes in how we conduct our business and how we work at our jobs. We're trying to replace the old way of doing things with a new system of management principles and practices. Of course, I'm talking about our total quality management system, a system intended to help us build the highest quality products at the lowest possible cost, to be more competitive in an increasingly competitive world. We must change if we're to survive and grow. One of the key elements in making change happen is communication. It is so important that we've restructured management throughout many of our companies to make communications better, to tear down the barriers between companies, departments, and people, to speed the flow of ideas and information, to improve decision-making and productivity, and ultimately to guarantee first-time quality in everything we do. Better communication is what this program is all about. Every 90 days, we'll report to you on important events in our companies, about corporate policy and long-range plans. We'll talk about political and governmental issues impacting our business. We'll report on financial performance and new developments in products and technology. We'll also talk about our competition. But most importantly, we'll meet and hear from people throughout McDonnell Douglas to learn about the work they do and the things they're doing to help make us the leading aerospace company. In fact, we're going to meet one of our teammates right now. We're off to Douglas Aircraft Company in Long Beach, where we'll meet Rick Bolts. Rick is the leader of an assembly team that attaches the wing to the fuselage on the MD-80 jetliner. His team has taken responsibility for planning its own work and solving production problems. They've not only managed to reduce the time it takes to do their job, but they're having fun doing it. As a team leader, my responsibilities are production and performance. And kind of like a mediator between team, the team itself, and supervision. I feel a good team leader has got to have communicative skills, be a jack of all trades, know the entire job package that he's responsible for, and be able to assist in helping everybody on the team. When I arrive at DAC, I'll come in first thing and I'll visually look at all the aircraft. Right, after, right off the bat, that's 5.30 in the morning. I go to the computer, run the daily dispatch list, that tells me all the open items on the aircraft that we're working. I'll make out everybody's job function for that day. I'll confer with my supervisor. My supervisor will work the constraints out, problems areas or whatever. If this person's gonna be absent, maybe he has a little bit of forewarning or whatever. Then I will meet with the team at six, we have a team meeting. We'll discuss the job assignments. If they don't agree, they'll give me feedback and I'll implement their feedback. And then I'll go and check everybody's work, see if everybody's on the job. If they have any problems, any constraints they're running in, into, if they need tools or anything of that nature, I'll get that. Right after lunch, we have another meeting to find out again if they have any more constraints, how the job's coming, if they're going to meet their daily quota. If they're not, I will either reassign them or pitch in and help. If there's absenteeism, I'll be in there right off the bat. Empower it means to me as a team leader that the, my crew, my team members, they have the power. We never had it before. 
Um, before it was like dictation. Now it's communication between jobs. Now we're getting feedback from the employees. Hey, this isn't right. And they're, they're telling me and I'm telling my management, hey, we can do this faster than what the company says we can do it and, and we've done it. For instance, the IEs, industrial engineers, do time studies and they basically sit down and watch an employee doing a certain aspect of a job and they'll, they'll set standards, time standards, to how long that takes them to do that one operation. I asked the team openly and honestly how long it took them to do the job without constraints being part shortages, um, lack of inspection or whatever. And the company said six days, the team said five, and we accomplished that. We did it in five. There's two individuals that do long 20 on aircraft. That's where the wing joins the fuselage. And there's a shim there, but the, the spacing is always not the same. There could be 30 thousandths outboard and 20 thousandths on the inboard. And <clears throat> basically it takes them five, maybe eight hours to make one shim. They suggested we use the quick fix shop to where they could make that shim in two hours. It would take a day and a half to do this one operation. Now we can get it done in four to six hours. That innovation came from communication between the team, myself, and management. Oh man, time to get the finish, man. You gotta get them out of here. Leave enough room for those one holes for the third clip. Yeah. TQMS, right, right it empowers the people on the floor ownership, pride in the aircraft, and it gives them more responsibility. I would like to see management follow up with TQMS, with the hourly personnel, team leaders, and teams, and really coach them and make this work. It's basically up to management, along with the, you know, regular worker, they've got to work together as a team. Management could really help TQMS work by supporting the team leader with, uh, better communicative skills and leadership skills. They've gone to all kinds of classes and all this and they know these things. And if they would just coach the team leader along just a little bit instead of dropping the whole ball of wax on him, it will work. If, is it the answer to the problem? It's yet to be seen. It's working now. There's uh, we've got a lot of drawbacks in it, a lot, a lot of non-participation. But the people who are participating, the teams who are, is a go. I think that TQMS does offer the opportunities for growth and moving up into a salary position or like say development or um, planning or inspection or engineering or you know you've got to work hard for those. There's an old saying that you've gone to the old school. I believe I've gone to the old school. You kind of scratch and you know everything's not given to you but you had to go out and earn it. Thank you Rick Bolts and members of your team for making that kind of story possible. It's a good example of the continuous improvement that can be accomplished when people are empowered to contribute and make decisions about their daily work. And the best thing about it is that they're having more fun and job satisfaction because of it. And now let's take time for a subject important to all of us as owners of McDonnell Douglas, our financial performance in the second quarter. It wasn't very good. In fact, it was the worst in the 22 years since McDonnell and Douglas merged. We should all care about our financial performance because over 80,000 of us own stock in the company through the savings plans and the PaySop. Those plans now own 30% of all the outstanding stock. So in a very real sense, we are the major owners of McDonnell Douglas. In the second quarter, we reported a loss of $48 million. The reaction on Wall Street was immediate. Our stock price dropped by $5 per share to a value of a little over $72. The market value of the stock in our savings plans, your stock, was reduced by $57 million in the course of a few hours. In addition, our credit rating was lowered, making it more expensive for us to borrow money. Simply put, investors are now worried about our ability to repay debt. How did our second quarter compare with other aerospace companies?